Enchanted forests are one of the oldest tricks in the storytelling handbook. They've appeared in myths, fairy tales, and epic journeys for thousands of years. Even though Frozen flipped the classic Disney script on its head in a lot of ways, Hi. You're creepy. it still operates within the usual fairy tale formula. So let's see what we can find out about the Enchanted Forest of Frozen 2 by going back through the myths and fairy tales of the past. Let's start with what we know for sure. The Enchanted Forest is in the north, as north as we can go in fact, and way back in the day Elsa and Anna's parents were both there. There was some sort of conflict, seemingly between Arendelle and the Northundra, who inhabit the forest and ever since there has been a thick magical fog over it, preventing anyone from going in or out. Let's focus on the conflict in the fog. During the brief flashback to wartime we see a battle, and based on the clothes that the soldiers wear the two sides seem to be Arendelle and the Northundra. There are the Napoleonic uniforms of the Arendellians and the more practical, minimal clothes, free of gold buttons and tassels which makes sense for a nomadic people like the Northundra. But the battle is short-lived as three supernatural forces intervene. First there's a blazing purple fire, then an intense gust of wind followed by a wall of fog that has covered the forest ever since. Both sides realize that the time for squabbling is over. Everybody's working at all times, and you know what? And so they drop their weapons and run from the fire, shielding themselves from the wind. Exactly how and why these phenomena intervened will likely be the central mystery of Frozen 2. Before they were at war, Arendelle and Northundra seemed to be on good terms. As we can see from the happy young Iduna frolicking in the enchanted forest and using her wind powers to flirt with an also happy, also young Agnar, there was a time of relative peace, even friendship between the two nations. So what went wrong? Pabby, the troll slash rock slash sage, gives us a clue in the mini Aurora Borealis that he conjures up in the recent trailer. If you watch it slowed down, you can see an image of soldiers on a boat morphing into a handshake. The hands part and the image transforms again, but this time, the hands are holding swords. What this seems to imply is that there was a peace treaty, or at least some type of agreement between Northundra and Arendelle, but somebody broke it. A battle ensued which was cut short by the mysterious intervention of the purple fire and magic wind and the enchanted forest was covered in fog. Since nobody was able to get in or out of the forest after the something went wrong moment, it would make sense that all the information surrounding the event would be trapped in the fog, just like the North Eldrans. But Agnar, who's telling the story, must have been present for the event. And judging by that knowing, melancholy look, Iduna was there too. Having escaped the fog, they probably played a central role in the catastrophe. As they journey through the foggy forest, Elsa and Anna will be investigating their parents' role in the mysterious event. To explain exactly what this role is, we have to go on our own little trip through the history of enchanted forests in fairy tale and myth. What is Disney's favorite thing in the whole world? Okay, aside from money. It's fairy tales. Looking back through the catalog of Disney animated classics is like reading the track list of a greatest hits album of fairy tale and myth. They've searched through the cultural past with a fine toothed comb and picked out the best archetypal stories from all over the world. Frozen is a reworking of Hans Christian Andersen's The Snow Queen. Mulan is based on the Chinese legend of Hua Mulan from thousands of years ago. Aladdin is an adaptation of a story in 1001 Nights, which is also a millennium old. Beauty and the Beast is based on an 18th century French fairy tale. The Little Mermaid draws on a 19th century fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen. Pinocchio, Sword in the Stone, Hercules, Peter Pan, Cinderella, Snow White, Pocahontas, Robin Hood. Do you get the picture? Even Disney's recently acquired franchises are reskinned versions of classic mythical stories. Thor is an obvious example, but Star Wars too. George Lucas openly admits that he followed Joseph Campbell's hero quest template to a T when he wrote Star Wars, putting the classic narrative into a futuristic disguise. So the writers at Disney are attracted to fairy tales, but the writers of fairy tales have an even stronger obsession with enchanted forests. The Brothers Grimm collected and compiled hundreds of European folk tales. Grimm is the name. Two M's. We are the Brothers Grimm and are to fairy tales as Michael Jordan is to basketball. Even though they wrote hundreds of them, the brothers were incapable of creating a story without an enchanted forest in it. This is not an exaggeration. Every one of their stories has a scene where somebody goes into a forest and sees or hears something weird. What's happening? Seriously, we'll take you through some examples. First, there's the riddle. 
There was once a king's son who longed to travel, so he started out, taking no one with him but a faithful servant. Once, as night was falling, he found himself in the midst of a big forest and had no idea where to look for shelter. Then he saw a hut and a girl walking towards it. Whoa, what? Oh! And the devil with the golden hairs. The boy started out with the letter, but he lost his way and at nightfall found himself in a large forest. Seeing a light in the darkness, he headed for it and came to a hut. When he went in, an old woman was sitting alone by the fire. If you want more, we've got more. Once there was a forester who went out hunting, and in the middle of a forest he heard a sound like a child crying. From the Grimm's version of Snow White, the poor child was all alone in the great forest. She was so afraid that she looked at all the leaves in the trees and didn't know what to do. She began to run, she ran over sharp stones and threw brambles and the wild beast passed her by without harming her. She ran as long as her legs could carry her and then just before nightfall, she saw a little house and went in to rest. Hello? In Six Who Made Their Way Into The World, a guy gets shafted on a paycheck and in his anger, guess where he goes? Me, you can have it. Bristling with rage, he went off into the forest. A dark age indeed. So what is with all the forests? Did the Brothers Grimm have traumatic memories of trips to the woods with Mother Grimm and Father Grimm? Maybe, but the stories they collected weren't actually of their own invention. They're all folk tales that have been passed down orally for generations, and many of them have similar versions in different parts of the world. The Grimm's take on Little Red Riding Hood, for example, has become the canonical one that we all know and love. But the story changes depending on where you are. A version recorded by the aptly named Italian Italo Calvino is called The False Grandmother. This is all to say that although the Grimm's were the ones that wrote the stories down and published them in a book, it was thousands, if not millions of people who actually came up with them over years and years. We're here to save your land from evil enchantment. The stories, written collectively, are a reflection of the societies that made them. In other words, the Western world feels some type of way about forests. Why is that? <laughs> well, the woods are big, scary, and wild. They serve as a marker for where society ends and the wilderness begins. The forest is a place free of structure, where it's easy to get lost and disappear if you step off the path. But if you make it out to tell the fairy tale, you'll be a different person than when you went in. The forest is a place of self-discovery, and the enchanted forest is a way of illustrating that, making it palatable and iconic. This is the purpose of Frozen 2's Enchanted Forest. Just like the forest from the Epic of Gilgamesh and the Wizard of Oz and countless other classic stories, although Elsa will be journeying through it in the literal, physical sense, she's actually searching for something inside of herself. Despite its name, Frozen 2 will be about much more than just ice and snow. The new movie is introducing three new supernatural elements to complement Elsa's existing ice, earth, wind, and fire. The elements are each represented by a magic obelisk at the entrance to the enchanted forest. Since the stones have been covered in fog, the magical elements they represent have lain dormant, but something's brewing in the forest, and the elements are unleashed, wreaking havoc in Arendelle. This is where the fairy tale stuff comes in. Just like the characters in Grimm's fairy tales, Elsa and Anna are going to come up against some weird supernatural challenges in the Enchanted Forest. Regardless of what they appear to be, these magical tests will be just that, tests, meant to tease out the sisters' relationship to the elemental forces of their world, and, of course, to each other. On the quest, Elsa will find out where her powers originated. She didn't only inherit a sweet castle and a whole kingdom when her parents died, Elsa also got the ability to use magic. But how do we know that her powers are an inheritance? In the trailer, we see Elsa's mom equating herself with the magical wind by pushing leaves around and riding on the breeze. She also uses it to flirt with her husband-to-be, young King Agnar, ruffling his hair with a little gust of magic wind. Since the catastrophe, she hadn't been using her wind powers, fearing a repeat of the world-altering event that seemed to stem in part from her. If magic runs in the family, then it's only a matter of time until Anna develops her own elemental abilities. The trailer hinted at what these might be, with a scene of sisterly tension. When Elsa reprimands Anna for following her into the darting purple flames, Anna, foreshadowing the nature of her power, responds defiantly, saying, Then stop walking into fire. Foreshadowing aside, there's also, of course, her red hair and fiery temperament. That leaves one more element. Earth or Rock will also find a character to control it, and our money's on Honey Marin, the North Aldrin. Disney officially describes her as a true free spirit, 
who wants nothing more than to bring peace to the enchanted forest. She is bold and brave with a reverence for the magic of nature. If you're thinking that Honey Marin can't have these hereditary powers because she's not related to the magical sisters, then think again. Iduna, Anna and Elsa's mom, the one who has wind powers in the trailer, is from North Eldra. So there's a very real possibility that Honey Marin is a long lost cousin of the royal family and thus eligible to learn magic. Let's just hope she doesn't get too carried away with those boulder throwing rock monsters and the family can set their differences and different pasts aside for the sake of the enchanted forest and its elemental balance. Because unlike in Las Vegas, what happens in the enchanted forest does not stay there. It has worldwide implications in Frozen 2. Just like the other fairy tales, the fate of the whole world hangs in the balance. What do you think will happen in the Enchanted Forest? Will everyone make it out alive? Will the elements be balanced? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to The Binger.